I love bears. How can they be so dangerous when they have ears like these? Bears are definitely my favorite wild animal, other than maybe crocodiles. And also Sasha, my vicious and oh so wild apex predator. There are exceptions to my love of bears though. Sloth bears? Mm, kinda gross. Pandas? Well, they're cute, but they're so, so stupid. Sun bears? They just kinda ruin bears for me. Cave bears? Let's just say I'm glad they're extinct. Moon bears? AKA Asian black bears? More like stays in the back bears, back of my favorite animals list. That's not true, I love you. I just couldn't resist. Polar bears? I mean, they're okay, but they're no pizzly. Or grizzly. Or American black bear. I really like bears. Ursa Ring is part sun slash moon bear and part grizzly. Sun and moon bears are both very closely related and are often confused for one another. I mean, they both have these partial rings on their chests and are found in Asia, so I don't blame people for the confusion. But if you're ever confused about which is which, simply ask yourself, Does he look like a b bear that is ugly? then it's a sun bear. I do love their super puffy shoulder neck fluffs that they've got going on. Very fitting of Ursa Ring's shoulder things. And also Ursa Luna's shoulders? But these bears are black bears and these bear Pokemon are definitely brown. So there's definitely some bear mixing going on. Like with the Pizzly, a polar bear grizzly. They're so cute and so, so sad. They're mixing more and more because Earth's warmer temperatures means that grizzlies can expand north. Meanwhile, polar bears are losing all of their ice so they have no choice but to move south where there's solid land. Yay! But mixing in a brown bear like the grizzly makes perfect thematic sense. After all, Teddy Ursa is a brown teddy bear and brown teddy bears are the iconic plush toy. They are a symbol of toys as a whole even. And their story is pretty simple. Stuffed animals, bears included, had been a thing for a while, but it was in 1902 that they finally took off. Then US President Theodore Roosevelt was on a big game hunting trip with many other hunters, and while they found plenty of animals, Theodore had not located a single bear, which made him a bit sad. One of his assistants, though, did find one, cornered it, tied it up, and then invited Theodore to shoot it. But that's unsportsmanlike, so he didn't. News of this event was later published in a paper. Later, a political cartoonist satirized the event, and when a Morris Mictum saw that cartoon, he and his wife, who made stuffed animals, made a stuffed bear dedicated to him, and called it Teddy's Bear. It grew popular enough that mass production began, and you know, the rest is history. Little kids sleeping with their stuffed teddy bears soon became commonplace, and we see it in media all the time, from Peter Pan to Winnie the Pooh. And this association with sleeping, both because kids sleep with teddy bears, and because bears sleep all winter, as well as just the existence of moon bears, as well as the Ursa Major and Ursa Minor constellations in the night sky, is why the whole Teddy Ursa line not only has a whole moon motif going on, but they also all have Ursa in their names. So what is an Ursa? Well, it's just Latin for bear. Simple as that. Uh, but more people these days associate it with the constellations more so than bears as a whole. But what's with those constellations? They look like cookware. Why are they also bears? Well, the Big and Little Dippers, as they are also known, are just parts of the bigger bear constellations. You're looking at the bear's butt specifically, you weirdo. Here's the whole thing. You can probably see the bear now. See? Yeah. It's so obviously a bear that various civilizations all over the world came to the same conclusion. The Greco-Roman story is about Jupiter's wife turning Jupiter's mistress into a bear, later discovering she had a son, and then doing the same to him. So Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. The Lakota and Algonquin each use their word for bear for that set of stars. The Wasco Wisrom say the constellation is five wolves and two bears left in the sky by Coyote, the trickster. 
In old northern Europe, it was believed the great bear lowered a younger bear to the earth, and when it was killed, its spirit rose to become Ursa Minor. This is also one of only three star groups mentioned in the Bible. Job 9.9 describes it as the great bear. My favorite interpretation, though, has to be from the Iroquois. My biggest issue with this constellation is that bears don't have tails that long. So, in the Iroquois story, those three stars are not the bear's tail, but rather three hunters in the distance chasing after the bear. And the Burmese think it's a crab, but what of the Japanese? Pokemon is a Japanese game after all, and, well, there isn't so much a bear connection, but there is still a very interesting connection. In Shinto, this constellation specifically belongs to Amenomin Akan Nushi. Amenomina Kanushi is the oldest and most powerful kami, one of the components of Arceus, in fact. So very fitting, then, that Ursaluna was introduced in this game. But here's a follow-up question. Why is it the new Stoutland? In Pokémon Sun and Moon, we were introduced to ride Pokémon, and Stoutland was the one that we rode around on for it to sniff and dig. Makes sense, because it's a dog. Detective dogs and drug-sniffing dogs and hunting dogs are all trained to do exactly that. Depending on the breed, a dog's sense of smell is between 10,000 and 100,000 times better than we humans, a group that includes me. Yes, I, like you, have around 6 million olfactory receptors. The part of the nose that lets you smell. A bloodhound, the dog with the best nose, has 300 million, and in a wider variety of kinds, too. And the part of their brain that deals with smells is 40 times bigger than ours. But get this. Black bears smell seven times better than a bloodhound. Most other species of bear still smell five times better than a bloodhound. And really, a bear's main scent is its smell. Polar bears follow their nose for 40 miles. Yeah, they smell food 40 miles away. Granted, there isn't much in the Arctic to block smells, but even in forests, your typical bear can smell food 20 miles away. The saying, follow your nose, comes to mind. One whiff and they know all of their directions. They use their nose like a star map that the Ursa constellations have been focused on for thousands of years. Ursa Luna gives you directions the same way the Ursa constellations do. Here is the navigational method humans in the Northern Hemisphere have used since before written history. First, find Ursa Major. It's pretty easy because the seven brightest stars in this constellation are super bright compared to most in the night sky, and they also form a very distinct shape. Then, with the shape of the bear's butt, aka the Big Dipper. You can take these two stars and have them point you right to Polaris. Or you could recognize this shape and then start looking for Ursa Minor, or the Little Dipper, which is the same shape, though not as bright. But then, upon finding that, you follow Ursa Minor's tail and BAM! The end is Polaris itself! So what's Polaris? Well, it's known as the North Star. It's been used to tell direction and time for eons. And isn't direction just where you are or are looking in space? Space? Hmm? Time and space? Dear God, it all comes together. And there are many other constellations around these ones that have lines that line up pretty well with the Ursas too, all helping orientate you, as seen here. This constellation is such a big part of northern life that Alaska has Ursa Major on their state flag. But again, just its butt. The weirdos. The official state of furries, I guess. Fun fact, bears even hear a lot better than we do, around 40 to 40,000 hertz, while humans hear around 20 and 20,000, meaning technically we can hear bass just a tad better than bears. But that doesn't matter much, because have you heard what bears listen to? Oh hey, check out its Raycons! That's today's sponsor too! The planes of Hisui can get a bit... Plane? So I use my Raycon Everyday Earbuds to easily connect to any Bluetooth device, like my Switch or my phone, and listen to music on the go. They've got 8 hours of active playtime and have a total of 32 hours when using its charging case. And best of all, they come in at half the price of other premium audio brands, so even Sneezler can easily afford them and her fur dye. You can be as active and bouncing around as you want with them too. No need to be worried about them falling out because these are snug and comfortable, conforming to even the weird of beers. Uh, wait, how does that work? It's no wonder they have over 48,000 five-star reviews. You look like the type that would enjoy a deal, though. So, to get 15% off of your Raycon purchase, head to this video's description and click my link, or go to buyraycon.com slash Loxton. Either way, you save.
like a Bascule Legion, and a big thanks to Raycon for supporting our content. New question. So Teddy Ursa has a crescent moon, Ursa Ring has a hollow ring, perhaps representing a new moon, and Ursa Luna then has a filled out circle, so a full moon. That's not a question. Uh, but did you notice that Ursa Luna's strange eyebrows resemble clouds in front of the moon? There we go, that's a question. Small clouds just kind of covering the lower part of the moon is a very common way of depicting it. But why can't it move its eyebrows? Oh, because it's peat! Just like the stuff on its back and all over it. And that also explains its odd evolution method. I mean, you give Ursa Ring a peat block while in the Crimson Mirelands, when it's a full moon, egad, that's a lot of steps. But it begs a few questions, like what is peat? Why is peat? Bear? So what is peat? Well, it's an accumulation of partially decayed vegetation or organic matter unique to natural areas called peatlands, bogs, mires, moors, and more. It's kind of like clay or mud, except organic, hence the ground type. And if you notice this world map of peatlands, you'll see that Japan doesn't really have many, except in Hokkaido which is Sinnoh, which is Hisui. According to the Pokédex, Hisui's swampy terrain gave Ursa Luna its burly physique and newfound capacity to manipulate peat at will. And that likely has to do with bears being burrowers. Bears rarely use the same den twice, so each year they have to dig a whole new one. They particularly like digging under trees, so the root cover becomes their ceiling. And you'll notice that a lot of ground-type Pokémon are based on animals that do this. Moles, shrews, snakes, rabbits, cicadas. And in fact, the Ezo brown bear is particularly famed for digging big holes in the sides of hills, and Ezo sounds familiar. Why is that? Oh right, it's what Hokkaido used to be called before they renamed it during the Meiji period, which is the same era that inspired Pokemon Legends Arceus, which similarly sees Sinnoh named Hisui instead. How could I forget that? The Ezo brown bear is one of the largest bears, period, and are famous on the Shiritoko Peninsula in eastern Hokkaido. Females with cubs often spend their time near people, and often will just approach fishermen, and in over half of a century of this, no accidents or casualties have been reported. This particular connection with Hokkaido's people may be another reason why Ursa Luna plays a vital role in helping the trainer do the things that it do. It being an Ainu Kamui may also play a role though. The Ainu are those indigenous to Hokkaido, remember, and Kamui can be translated as god or spirit or both. In this case, we're talking about Kim Un Kamui, the god of the mountains and bears. So here, Ursa Luna has a mountain of peat on its back and it's a bear. The connection with the Ainu may also be referenced with Ursa Luna's cloud eyebrows. Compared to the Japanese of Honshu, Ainu men are said to be hairier and have bushier eyebrows. Even Ibisu, a Shinto god that is sometimes said to be Ainu, is typically depicted with larger, rounder eyebrows. And Ainu women would traditionally get tattoos for various reasons, sometimes to distinguish ethnic groups, sometimes to show that they were married. But the most characteristic of these are of course their mouth tattoos, but tattooing the backs of of their hands or their eyebrows was also common. Oh hey, that young Ainu woman has an Ezo bear cub. What's up with that? Well, a big part of their worship of the bear mountain god was the Iomante ceremony. If a hunter finds a hibernating bear and she has a newborn cub with her, they will kill the mother and bring the cub back to the village to raise it as one of their own. Some say they would even give the cub human breast milk. They would continually feed it high quality food, sometimes even the best cut of meat the village has, and when it turns two, they tie it to a post and shoot it with several arrows to sacrifice it. The village partakes in its meat and blood, and they place its skull on the end of a spear or post and wrap it up in its fur. It is now an object of worship, and the bear has been sent off to the world of the gods or spirits, where it will tell them of all of the good deeds and hospitality that the village showed them. The practice was made illegal in 1955, in part due to the bear's dwindling population, and even even today, the species is considered vulnerable, but in 2007, they were given religious exemption of the animal rights laws. Though, these days, the ceremony no longer involves killing the animal. But raising a bear as a family member from cubhood is sort of what little kids do to teddy bears, right? Sleeping with it, feeding it at tea parties and playtime, raising a teddy Ursa into an Ursa Ring or Ursa Luna is sort of the Pokemon world's equivalent. Whether that exact connection was intended or not, though, what is true is that 
Ezo bears are extremely important in Ainu culture, so obviously it had to be there for the new bear Pokemon in Hisui. Making it an Ursaring Evo to sort of finish that line off too just makes perfect sense. You know, put it on all fours so it's a natural ride Pokemon to utilize the bear's sense of smell and connection with giving directions with constellations and stars, make it evolve at a specific time and place to reference time and space, make it covered in peat because Ezo bears burrow a lot and also peat blocks are also extremely important to the Ainu. Plus, bears taking mud baths isn't uncommon and like most animals who do it, it's to remove parasites and help regulate body temperature and moisture levels. So a blanket of muddy peat draped over Ursaluna's shoulders works really well. You could even see it Sort of as like the top of a puffy fur coat. So all in all, it's a line of bears, who would have thought? But I do love how they incorporated the bear's cultural status as a very important thing in the sky. Very neat. But not nearly as cool as what they did with Avalug in this game. Oh, I can barely wait for you to see that one. <laughs> Never stop using your noggin.